Okay, so we look at something known as contours. Okay, so now visualizing things in 3D can sometimes become a bit difficult, especially for the person who is making the slides. So we can can we do a 2D visualization of this traversal? Have I done this in the uh, ML course? No. Okay, good. Can we do a 2D visualization of this traversal along the aero surface? Right. So for that, we need to understand something known as contours. How many of you have looked at contour diagrams before? How many of you know how to read them? Okay, all of you know how to read them. So let's see. Uh, now, suppose this is what my error surface looks like, and I have a single scalar variable, right? So I, this is just a function of w, for example, and this is what my error surface looks like. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take horizontal slices on this error surface. Fine. Now can you tell me how this is going to look from the top? Oh, oh, sorry, let me, yeah, you should start answering before un understanding the question. This is, uh, this error surface is actually, so I was wrong in saying this is theta. Assume this is w comma b and you're just seeing the front view of the error surface. What you're seeing here is just the front view. This error surface is actually like a Dementor's hat, so right? So imagine that it's a hat placed like this and you're just seeing the front view of this. Otherwise, the top view doesn't make sense, right? So now I'm going to slice this hat at two vertical positions and now you're looking at it from the top. What are you going to see? Ellipsis. Okay. Everyone agrees with that? Okay. So you'll see something like this. Do you see something peculiar about this? Is this a contour map? Is this? No? Okay. And all of you raised your hands when I asked you, you know, contour. Okay. Uh, so do you see something peculiar about this? What is it? How many of you get that? So what you're seeing here is this portion, right, where the slope was very steep. The difference between the two circles or the two ellipses is small. And you can visualize it if you try to look at it from the top, this distance is actually going to be small, right. And in the areas where the slope was gentle, relatively gentle, the distance is more. And you can again visualize it, right, from if you look at from the top, this is the distance that you're going to see, right, okay. So, and what do you say about these guys? What does that indicate? They have the same value. Across that entire region, the value is same because you have taken a vertical, you have taken a horizontal slice at a particular vertical position, right? So, you have taken a horizontal slice at this position. That means the error is going to remain the same throughout that rim. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, it's very important that you understand this. Okay, so there are only two things that you need to understand if you want to read contour maps. One is a small distance between the contours indicates that a steep slope exists along that direction and a large distance between the contours indicates that a gentle slope exists along that direction. So everything today is going to be about steep and gentle slopes. And the other thing that you know, need to know is that whenever you see one circle, the error is the same along that circle or ellipse or whatever you boundary that you see, the error is the same because you are taking these vertical slices. So we are uh, ready with this rule. Everyone understands this perfectly. Okay. So I'll just give you a couple of exercises and you have to tell me whether you understand this or not. Okay. So I've plotted a 3D surface, a uh, 2D, uh, I've, what is this? No, no, no. This is a contour. Yeah, I, everything is not going to look like clean circles always, right? Okay. So this is a contour. Every line that you see here represents one cut along the vertical axis, right? That means the error is the same there. Now what you are seeing is a contour. I want you to guess the 3D surface from this. No, just guess it. I mean, just keep it to yourself. I mean. Oh, the color is the same, right? Uh, blue is good, red is bad. So blue means the darker the shade of blue, the lesser the value of the error. The darker the shade of red, the higher the value of the error, okay? I want you to imagine the 3D surface. If you can do that, then I'll be sure that you understand what, how to read a contour. How many of you can imagine this? You can just say yes, right? I can never figure out whether you actually figured it out. Okay. So let me help you with the first one and then we'll do a few more. So let's start with the extremes, right? So uh, let me see how to do this. So this portion, okay, I also need to do it for the video. Okay, so let me just do it here. So this portion, 
what do you think about the slope there very flattish why because this is the line that you see and the other line is not even in the figure right so it's basically very flat the slope is very gentle is it a low region or a high region high region fine okay now what is actually happening here what is the slope here very high that's why these two regions are very close to each other so from this high region what is happening suddenly there is a slope and you are going down and you know you are going down because we are reaching a blue region right okay now what is happening here very flat and this also flat but slightly upper than the lower guy is that fine now can you all imagine this okay and is this what you thought it is perfectly yes right this is exactly what you thought okay just a minute uh, so the orientation here has been changed a bit right uh, so this portion actually corresponds to this portion are the two this is clear this portion corresponds to this portion right so just orient it accordingly so you start off this high plateau region which is here then you start going down you go down and then you see a fold here right that's this fold so you went to a darker shade and then you came up to a slightly li li lighter shade maybe the sh the shades are okay everyone gets this you all understand this okay guess the 3d surface how many of you want to play this forever now start with the extremes the bad guys the good guys the plateaus and the valleys and then see how do you go from the plateau to the valley okay tell me the corners first this plateau or valley plateau this plateau higher than this or lower than this lower than this 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 towards the valley it's still between red and blue right it's not like right down there and what happens to all these guys all are very steep slopes all converging down into the valley so can you perfectly imagine this and you'll tell yes when i say when i show you the 3d surface right again you need to reorient yourself so this corner here is this corner this corner here is this corner so we had these two plateaus at the top we had these slightly higher valley slightly lower valley and then all of them going into a very deep valley do you see that everyone gets this how many if you have a problem with this if you have a problem with this you'll just sleep off in the rest of the lecture so i want you all to understand this very carefully i don't mind repeating it how many of you understand this you understand the regions with a gentle slope the regions where you have a steep slope and you end up into that valley which is the valley here can you point it out fine okay so we'll move ahead so now we know what contour maps are and how to visualize them and so on right so now we'll try to see the gradient at this and algorithm instead of running it on the 3d error surface we'll try to run on this 2d contour map okay so this is what i already showed you right i started from here and i showed you how it comes here or something like this right that was the gradient descent um, let me just erase this okay that is something like what the gradient descent algorithm did now uh, again you just need to reorient yourself uh, so let's see this corner is this corner this corner is this corner and so on right so you get the reorientation right it just shifted now i'm going to start my gradient descent algorithm from here from this point okay everyone sees that okay now i'm going to start from there and you have to help me right i'm not going to just keep clicking you have to tell me what is going to happen so what will happen initially fast movement slow movement slow movement right so i'm running it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it just keeps running very slowly very very slowly now what will happen fast okay now you see actually you can see the arrows these arrows are the quantity the magnitude of the movement right so earlier this movement was so small that you could not even see the arrows i've been drawing arrows right from the beginning but you could not see them at the beginning now you can see them right now what will happen So you see the exact same movement that I did on the 3D surface. Now you can visualize it on the 2D surface, right? And you can easily tell me where it will go fast, where it will go slow, right? And where it will just keep moving very, very drag its feet and so on. Okay. So this is where it starts dragging its feet. And the same thing happened when 
we were in this region right so just you just make the connection that we are in the corresponding 3d region there okay fine so we are moving very very slow okay and it just keeps running okay so that's where we'll end this module so we just revised gradient descent we saw that things are proportional to the gradient that's why gradient descent and the smaller the gradient the slower the movement the larger the gradient higher the movement gentle the slope smaller the gradient steeper the slope larger the gradient okay